When it comes to high-end Cosmo object amplifiers, what brands come to mind? For me, it's Krell, Levinson, Pass Labs, AccuPhase, Diagostino, Audio Research, those brands. But what about techniques? Surely you think about turntables, but maybe not amplifiers, which is a shame because Techniques has built some really fine amplifiers, and their latest, the SUR1000, may be their best yet. But why is it that Techniques is not mentioned alongside the likes of Levinson or Pass Labs? And can the R1000 change that? Well, subscribe and hit that like button because we're going to find out. The SUR1000 is Technique's all new flagship stereo integrated amplifier. Now, visually, it looks a lot like a cross between the lesser SUG700, which is a personal favorite of mine, and the brand's reference separate amplifier, the SER1. Now, the R1000 is a fully digital amplifier, one that uses Technique's own Geno engine to eliminate jitter throughout the frequency range. Along with its active distortion cancellation technology, the R1000 is capable of optimizing its performance or, or power output to your particular loudspeaker, rather than kind of taking a, a one-size-fits-all approach like with other amplifiers. The amp itself produces 150 watts per channel into 8 ohms and 300 watts per channel into 4. There are two sets of binding posts, which means it can power two separate pairs of loudspeakers. It has both balanced and unbalanced analog inputs, as well as a built-in DAC with coaxial, optical, and USB inputs. Vinyl collectors, you're going to get a built-in moving magnet and moving coil phono preamp, which I'll get to in just a minute. Throw in a record in out for those of you who like to make your own recordings, a preamp output for adding either a separate amplifier or subwoofer, and you have the R1000's connection options pretty much covered. Now, in terms of design, the R1000 is elegant and the build quality is second to none. In fact, it is one of the better built amplifiers I have ever encountered. Even putting amps like Krell's old Evolution series and Pass Labs X358 to shame. If you could look up high fine jewelry in the encyclopedia, there would be a picture of the R1000. Now, this being a nearly $10,000 amplifier, I wasn't going to pair it to just any loudspeaker. Even though we've had this amp since about January, and I have paired it with every single loudspeaker that we have in house. So when I say the R1000 pairs well with anything, I mean everything, from the high efficiency Klipsch La Scala to the more traditional Focal Utopia Evo, you could take that to the bank. Now with respect to sources, we relied on a host of different digital and analog options. My favorite digital sources being the Techniques SLG700 Network SACD player and believe it or not, the Arillic S50 Pro. Obviously, the SLG700 is the better performer sonically, but for ease of use and app control, the S50 Pro is the real deal, especially when connected to the R1000's internal DAC. As for analog duties, I relied on the Techniques SL1200G as well as the Audio-Technica LP140XP, both of which were paired with my Ortofon 2M Black cartridge. Both sounded excellent. I did experiment with the Grado Sonata 3 for a bit, but I found that I ultimately preferred the Ortofon. Now, speaking of cartridges, let's start with the R1000's Phono Preamp because it's a feature that I think really helps to differentiate this amp from other integrateds. First, the Phono Preamp uses analog to digital circuitry, converting your favorite records from the analog realm for digital processing. Yes, I said digital processing. Do you realize what you've done? Before listening to any record, you really should calibrate your turntable, more specifically your turntable's cartridge to the R1000 using the supplied calibration record. This calibration record allows the R1000 to essentially hear your cartridge's performance and create a set of filters that tackle noise, crosstalk, and gain for better results. And you can store multiple cartridge calibrations within the R1000 if you find that, say, you like a specific type of cartridge for one type of record and a different cartridge for, say, another. Also, most phono preamps use the RIAA curve. The R1000 has this curve, but it also allows you to choose different curves, curves that are more unique to the record label of the album you are listening to, and I have to tell you, the effects are immediate. When listening to the album Tubular Bells 3, the performance was just among the best I've heard in either the analog or digital realm. The clarity, the focus, the spatial gains before and after calibration were just immediately noticeable. Also, dynamics mildly improved as I felt the noise floor of the album itself seemed lessened through the R1000. So next to listening to records through, say, the SUG700 connected to the 1210GAE turntable, the R1000's vinyl playback capability was just 
It was just second to none. It is without a doubt the single best analog setup I have heard in my own house to date. So those of you that are deep into that vinyl life and who may be looking for an all-in-one solution, the R1000 would be at the top of my must audition list just on the strength of its phono preamp capability alone. And it's the same story when it comes to other sources as well. The, the R1000 just excels at retaining as much of the signal in the digital realm for as long as possible. So sound wise, there really isn't that big of a difference when switching between say, an analog or digital source. So appreciable differences are going to fall largely to the source material itself, as I found the R1000 to be a bit of a, just, a, just an equalizer when it comes to connected devices. Case in point, when using the G700 versus the Arillic S50 Pro connected to the R1000's internal DAC, the differences in sound quality were just negligible. Now, if I use the G700's internal DAC as well as the S50 Pro's connecting them both to the R1000 via an analog connection, greater differences could be heard. And obviously, obviously the G700 was the better of the two. But since an analog to digital conversion is still taking place inside the R1000 when set up this way, you're, you're almost better off just using the DACs inside the amp. This in turn saves you money since you don't have to go crazy buying expensive outboard streamers or transport and it really does start to build a case in my opinion for the R1000's value. So what does the R1000 actually sound like? Well, the Technique sound isn't absolutely neutral and it can be slightly lean at times but it's not overly colored. It's clearly not a class A or AB sound but I wouldn't describe it as a stereo class D experience either. The R1000 is incredibly clear but soulful and it manages to take some of my favorite traits from my favorite amplifiers and just roll them all into one while still sounding coherent and unique in the process. So bass is grippy with great detail and dynamic snap. It has excellent presence and dimension. Not to mention instruments like bass guitar and drum kits sound and feel three dimensional, grounded in space the way they would if they were live. But I have heard amps that manage to extract a bit more low end weight from my speakers. I'm not saying the R1000 is bass shy, it just pulls up a little when it comes to absolute extension and depth, opting instead for say detail, delineation, and speed, which I totally don't mind. I like impact and I will always prefer an amp that gets the attack and decay of low notes right versus one that tries to impress me with excess or exaggerated bass. Now the R1000's mid-range is all about clarity, especially when it comes to vocals, allowing artists to stand out which is the starkest of contrast. Nothing, and I, I mean this, nothing escapes the R1000. Now I'm not gonna say that it is wholly organic as there is a cleanliness to its mid-range performance that feels elevated and polished. So listening to front men like REM's Michael Stipe or Brian Mulko of Placebo, they both sounded just a little bit more refined. The Techniques does not gloss over any of the detail and inflection in their voices, but nevertheless, it still manages to make some mid-range elements just that little more palpable. I almost always welcome this, though I, I can understand that some purists out there may disagree. And it's a similar story with the high frequencies. Are they, they're just so clean. I am absolutely in love with the R1000's ability to extract every iota of high frequency information within a track and present it with conviction without any of it becoming harsh or glaring or fatiguing. So with the R1000, you get those sparkly highs, that tremendous extension and decay with composure that is just top notch. But like the rest of its sonic signature, it isn't entirely neutral. Techniques is cleaning up some aspects of the recording, especially up top, and this is audible when listening to poorer recordings. Albums that I know to have top end issues, such as Alanis Morissette's MTV Unplugged or Panic at the Disco sound brilliant through the R1000, but I am aware that elements like compression and sibilance that are in the recording are being smoothed out by the Techniques. I appreciate the sheer listenability of the R1000 because just about everything that I played through it sounded bloody brilliant. But like with the mid-range, some purists may not cotton to the technique's mild editorializing. Soundstage wise, I am totally gobsmacked. Spatially, with respect to delineation, focus, and placement, I'm not sure that I've heard better. To say the R1000 soundstage is focused would be an understatement. Movement throughout the soundstage also borders on laser etched, which is evident throughout the track Seville from the Mission Impossible 2 soundtrack. And as for dynamics, this, along with the soundstage, are the R1000's two biggest strengths. While the presence of perhaps just an ounce or two more bass would absolutely flesh out this amp's sonic contrast, what it has 
is remarkable. The reflexes of the R1000 are absolutely up there with some of the very best, seemingly able to start and stop on a dime with no blow, no overhang, nothing, just bam. I freaking love it. It makes for an engaging experience at every volume level. But no product is perfect, and the R1000 isn't without its faults. While I am totally in love with the amp's built-in phono preamp and put it up there with some truly high-end offerings, the calibration procedure isn't what I would call automatic. It may take up to two or three attempts before the procedure is successful. I was always able to get it to work, but it just never worked the first time. And I'm not alone here, as even Technique's own virtual how-to demonstration took several attempts. Second, given the Technique's affinity for all things digital, I expected to see an HDMI input or two present, especially at this price point, and I got none. In 2021, I think it's reasonable to expect HDMI. It is a connector that is no longer exclusive to home theater. With more and more hi-fi components starting to include it, I think Technique's missed a golden opportunity by not having one. Third, I love the amp's minimalist aesthetic, though navigating through the menus to adjust things like the EQ curves or even just tone controls is a bit of a chore, and, and frankly not the most intuitive. Yes, this amp has a ton of functionality, which I appreciate, but from a UI experience, it is cumbersome at times. The display window is small and hard to read from several feet away, which could cause difficulties for those of you with less visual acuity. And now for the fun stuff. As for comparisons, I would put the R1000 up against the Musical Fidelity M8XI, the Yamaha AS3200, and the Canner AI110. None are as well-rounded as the techniques with respect to functionality and features, though the Musical Fidelity gets close. The M8XI is still one of my favorite amplifiers of all time, a distinction it now shares with the R1000. Both amps have great DACs, but the M8XI has more full-bodied bass, and as a result, comes across more rich and organic, at least to me. But the R1000 rules with respect to its vinyl playback capability, not to mention it's smaller, it's a tidier package, and it's just easier to live with day to day. The Yamaha AS3200 is a great integrated amplifier, and it has some of the same vintage charm, though the R1000 looks a touch more modern. The two amps have a similar sound, and I think they're going to appeal to the same type of customer. Now, you're going to spend less for the Yamaha, but I argue you get a lot more for your money with the techniques, which is why, for me, I prefer the R1000. And as for the canner, this was a late addition. I don't want to spoil our upcoming review of it, but the AI-110 is something special. It is a high-end tube amplifier, one that you wouldn't likely cross shop against the digital-centric product like the R1000, but I'm including it here because it's just shaping up to be something special, though it is limited with respect to features, and that may hurt its overall value proposition. But if all you care about is sound quality and not the bells and whistles, yeah. My biggest concern about the R1000 has nothing to do with the product and everything to do with access. This is now my third or fourth go around with their products and I have to say that each and every time, Techniques never ceases to amaze. They make some of my favorite products on the market right now. And I don't know if it's an old school high-end exclusivity mentality that's at play, but unless we're talking about turntables, it's as if Techniques is trying to keep their brand a secret. Like they become more preoccupied with awards and write-ups, which they totally deserve, than they are concerned about their products finding a way into your system, which is, in my opinion, criminal. I really think that if the brand would just address their distribution model, perhaps open themselves up to more online sales, they would easily take away market share from the competition. But all that aside, Techniques has... You did it. You crazy son of a bitch, you did. They've hit it out of the park. The R1000 stands on its own as a truly reference caliber product that ranks among the best that I've heard when it comes to just sheer musical enjoyment. I absolutely love it. There is no amp that we have in house, save maybe the deckware, that in the past six months I have enjoyed more than the R1000. It's phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. My only hope is that more of you get the opportunity to hear it. So that's it. That is my review of the Techniques R1000 Stereo Integrated Amplifier. Now it's time to find out, what did Christy think? We are in almost identical alignment when it comes to this particular amplifier. Hmm. I think it's a really, really, really good amp. Mm -hmm. I think it's beautiful. 
Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a still a little bit torn as to whether I like the visual style of it more or less than the Yamaha. Uh, I think I, I think I lean just slightly towards the styling of the Yamaha just because I like a little bit more of that vintage feel. Okay. And, um, the only thing that bugs me, and this is just completely subjective, but the, the, the bezeled edge around the meters on the technique. Oh, like the jeweled edge. It. Uh, it's it wasn't my favorite, okay. but oh, other than that, it's it's really pretty and mm-hmm. extremely extremely well made. The sound it had when playing records, yeah. you really were spot on when when you said that it's the best like analog playback we've had. Yeah, it was really really special and. I, I think if you're, like you said, if you're into that vinyl life, then you, you're, you're going to want to look at this one. Yeah. Um, no, no other product that I have come across in recent memory, save for maybe the phono preamp that Bandwidth Audio makes, has been as transformative of an experience for vinyl playback as this product. Um, and the and it, pairing it with the two M black, oh, yeah, the piece is resistance. Yeah, For, um, yeah. Forget that Grado <laughs> cartridge. That sounded, I don't know what was that. It sounded terrible. It did. It's so, sorry, Bill, but that was yeah, not I, good. I'm sorry. That was get yeah. yourself a Ortofon two M black and yeah. really see what you're you're missing in life because it was it was great it was great and great. and and i can't i can't overstate this enough like the r1000 just straight out of the box with vinyl playback is fantastic it really is but take the time even if it takes one or two attempts calibrate the cartridge to the amplifier it does make a difference and it's not subtle and like i said in the review like I know this piece is expensive. I know at ninety five, ninety six hundred dollars, um, it's expensive. But the bandwidth phono preamp I just referenced, I think, is like four grand on its own, and I would still probably give the edge to the technique. So you're talking about half the price just in the just in a separate phono preamp to get in the conversation with what Techniques is able to do here. And there's a part of me that maybe like. Some people watching this were like, oh, but it's taking analog into the digital realm. It's turning my records into into digital. I don't care. I really it don't was care. So good. It sounds so good. So good. I Yeah, there was a, a, a certain amount of clarity mm-hmm. that you was a, a bit hard to believe. Yeah. You kind of have to hear it to be, to to believe it. Mm-hmm. But the the difference was not subtle. Yeah, it's about as close to night and day as I'm willing to go on record as saying. It's it's a big deal. It's and a I, very big and deal. And I think that if you're really into digital and you've always had a a mild fascination with vinyl records, but you're like, oh, but is it gonna sound as good? This is gonna this could be the gateway mm-hmm. into really Allowing you so, allowing yourself to feel a little bit more comfortable with buying more, spending, you know, inve- investing more in vinyl. Yeah. Now I'm with you about. I have scratched my head more than once when it comes to what is going on with the brand itself, and mm-hmm. like it feels like they make it a bit difficult to get stuff at times. I think there's a little bit, not a little bit. I think there's <laughs> a large portion of the industry that has had difficulty letting go of the way things used to be. Yes. And it's it's adapt or die. Yeah. And if you, especially and I know I've talked about this before, but if you want to if you want to garner or get a piece of the younger audience and cuz I you know, look, I mean People our age and older, we are not going to be around forever. Mm-hmm. And with with any product or brand, you have to be looking to try to capture the attention of the people coming up, you know. Yeah. And I think that this is something that the um, hi-fi industry as a whole could do a better job at. Yeah. And techniques being among 
you know, yeah. the kind of worst offenders uh, because they make freaking great products. They, I just, you just really don't hear about them yeah. um, unless I guess you're reading stereophile or something. And I'm sorry. If That's not you're, where people if, are. yeah, if, unless you're, you know, over the age of 45, you're probably not, that's probably not happening. Yeah. No offense to stereophile, but, or any print magazine. I just, I mean, heck, I don't think many people in their early 20s are reading Vogue either. Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> there are other, way, other avenues to reach a younger audience. And I, and I would love to see more brands. It, explore those. Well, I look, I think techniques as a brand is very, I mean, obviously they're very steeped in culture. They were, you know, in the, in the early days of hi-fi 60s, 70s, you know, all that stuff, they were very much a force to be reckoned with. And they very much were the inventors in a lot of ways of a lot of technology that we use today. And I mean, they yeah, were like, I, I know who they are yeah. because I grew up knowing of their products. And yeah. I think they they seem to be, I, I, I want to say, back in like the 70s, mm -hmm. a, at least, yeah. uh, maybe 80s, they mm -hmm. were more of a household name. They were very much a household name. And they made truly great products. Um, but they sort of fell by the wayside in the late 90s into the 2000s and then disappeared. Like you couldn't, techniques disappeared. Um, and they came back, I want to say it was 2015, 2016, when their parent company, Panasonic, brought them back. And they brought them back with the focus on, say, their heyday. You know, the techniques of old were focused on build and quality and getting you that kind of thing, which is exactly what they should have done and what they did. The problem is, is I think they went just a little too far in the exclusivity side of things where their first products upon launch at CES many, many years ago when they came back were incredibly esoteric and incredibly high end. Like that R1 amp I referenced, it, that was insanely expensive, insanely expensive. And it wasn't, it was meant, I think it was meant to garner attention and and notoriety so that when other things came that that name was in people's minds the the problem is is i don't think they came to market with more stuff immediately after that relaunch fast enough mm -hmm. and so then they had to hit the special exclusive thing again and then when they hit it again they didn't follow it up with more accessible things fast enough. Yeah, I think you are. That's exactly. Yeah. I hear. I see where you're going because they have some really exceptional products that at this point should have been updated by now. Like those techniques, the the, the techniques, speakers. the technique speakers, the bookshelves, the yeah. especially the towers. In some, my humble opinion, you don't don't touch the towers. I think they're great. Why? Right, but. <laughs> But, yeah. Why isn't there a new? Why why haven't why why not bring them like get, bring me like version two or you know do what Bowers and Wilkins does call it a, a special edition and, <laughs> you know whoo new tower you know but it, <laughs> at least give me a reason yeah. to talk about you because yeah. I will yeah. you know and and I want and yeah those bookshelf speakers they're they can be they could compete with Kef's uh the metas yeah, they were metas before metas but they need they they can't they can't be as expensive as they are now and still be as old as they are without yeah. anything at, without having anything changed totally agree totally and agree so those are some things that i'm like oh can i just come sit in your uh board of <laughs> your <laughs> your ceo meeting for like a week <laughs> and uh, well, I'll fix all your problems. <laughs> and you know what? We wouldn't be this fussy about any of this stuff if we didn't love what they do. Absolutely. And that's the thing that I want to, you know, if you guys, if anybody in, you know, that can make a difference in, you know, that company, if you're listening, yeah. if we didn't care, we wouldn't be given it two seconds thought. Yeah. That's, and that's really, yeah, I hope that you take that to heart. Yeah, because we're not harping on the product. 
No, we love it. We love it. We love it. We, um, we love it. It's great. I want more people to know about everything else. But I do think it's time that they update some stuff. So that is it. That is now our review of the Techniques SU-R1000 Stereo Integrated Amplifier. What did you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, my question of the day for you is this. In your opinion, what does Techniques need to do in order to become ubiquitous with the likes of, say, Krell and Levinson? Really dominate the marketplace. I would love to know if you were their CEO, what would you do? Let's get a conversation started. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you guys have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here, and we both thank you very much. Be sure to check out our new merch. Christy has been hard at work getting that shop up and running for all of you guys. Uh, we have new stuff kind of appearing daily now, um, so be sure to check back uh, on that store often. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File, and I think that's it for us today. I apologize if any construction noise got into the mix. They are building a house directly across the street, but that's it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.